In this video, I'm going to share with you a quick and easy way to make your Mac terminal look and work beautifully. By the end of this video, you'll have a sleek and functional terminal with colors, syntax highlighting, autocompletion, and a prompt that displays useful details like your Git branch, your current language, and much more. Over the years, I've used various terminals and customization tools, but I eventually settled on Westterm and Starship. What I love about this setup is that you can get a pretty powerful and visually appealing terminal quite easily, but it also allows you to customize every last detail if you want to. I used to use iTerm2 with oh my ZSH and PowerLevel 10k. These are excellent tools, but eventually my config felt a bit bloated, and honestly I didn't fully understand it. I personally found Westterm and Starship to be easier to configure and maintain, which is why they've become my go-to tools. Another big advantage of these tools is that they aren't Mac specific. If you're on Windows or Linux, you can use the same configuration that I'm about to show you. However, the installation instructions will be different, so make sure to check out the documentation. With that said, let's get started. Alright, we are back in the default Mac terminal. The first thing we want to do is make sure that we have Homebrew installed. To do that, we can run brew dash dash version. We also want to verify that our current shell is CSH by running echo dollar sign zero. You can use Westerm and Starship with other shells as well, but again the instructions will be a bit different. Next, let's install Westerm. Westerm is a modern cross-platform terminal app which is gaining popularity lately. It is very fast, renders text and icons beautifully, and it uses Lua as a configuration language, which unlocks a ton of possibilities. The fact that it uses a programming language for configuration might seem a bit intimidating at first if you haven't worked with Lua, but I promise that it's not going to be complicated. To install it, we can run brew install cask rest term. Once it has been installed, we can close the default Mac terminal and open Westterm with command space and typing Westterm. To configure Westterm, we need to create a configuration file. First, I will create a directory for this file with make dir p and it's going to be located in config Westterm. And now I'm going to use touch to create the file Westterm.lua inside of that directory. Now I also want to cd into that directory. And let's open up the config file with your preferred text editor. In my case, it's going to be NeoVim. So I'll type nvim westterm.lua. If you're using VS Code, you would type code westterm.lua instead. Here we want to require the westterm module and get a config builder object. This config builder object essentially works like a Lua table. We can add fields to it that define our configuration. For example, we can add the field automatically reload config and set it to true. And then we just need to remember to return the config object. The next change I want to add is to disable the tab bar that you can see here on top. To disable it, I can set enable tab bar to false. Also, I prefer Westerm not to ask me for confirmation every time I close a window. So I add the setting window close confirmation and set it to never prompt. And I like to have a very clean terminal window. So I set the window decorations to resize. This will get rid of the top bar with the three icons here, but it will ensure that the window is still resizable. Let's actually save the current config and reload it with command R. Note that reloading the config won't be necessary anymore going forward. Now you can already see that the tab bar and window decorations are gone, so it seems that our configuration is working. Now let's add a few more settings. I like the cursor style in the terminal to be a blinking bar, and I like the Nord color theme, which matches my new Vim configuration. Another really nice feature of Westerm is that it supports a lot of color themes out of the box. To get an overview of the color themes that are available, you can go to the Westerm documentation, head over to configuration, and then on the left, click on color themes, where you'll find an overview of all the different color themes that are available. I also want to make some changes to the font. By default, Westerm comes with JetBrains Mono, which is actually my preferred font, but I like to make it bold and increase the font size a little bit. I can do that by adding the following lines to the configuration. And now let me also show you how you can use a different font that is not pre-installed with Westerm. Let's first save our configuration. As you can see, the changes will automatically be applied. Exit out of NeoVim. And let's run the following command. Brew search nerd font. This will give you an overview of all the nerd fonts that are available with Homebrew. And you see a check mark next to the ones that I have already installed. You can install a font with brew, install, cask, and then the name of the font. For example, font, go, mono, nerd, font. And now if you want to see exactly how to use this font in your Westerm configuration, Westerm actually provides a command for this, which is Westerm 
ls fonts list system. This will print out all the fonts that are available on your system and give you the exact rest home command that you can use in your config. Now to find the font that we just installed, let's actually create some space and then run the same command again. But this time we add a grab, go mono, and this will print only the commands related to our font. So if you wanted to use the go mono font, we could choose one of these options and copy paste it into our configuration. Now let's go back into our West Home configuration file. Here I'd like to add a few final options. The first one is a background image. The background config option allows you to compose a number of layers in order to produce the background content. The layers can be an image, a gradient or a solid color. In my case, the background consists of two layers. The first layer is an image where I made some adjustments to the saturation and the brightness. And the second layer is a solid gray color to which I added some transparency so that the background image can shine through. Now if I save the file, the background image should immediately appear. And there it is. As you can see, I chose the same background image for my terminal that I have as a wallpaper as well, but I made it significantly darker so that the text in front of it is more legible. Finally, I'm adding some padding to the left and right of the terminal to separate the prompt from the borders of the terminal window. With that, we are done configuring West Term, so let's save it and exit out of NeoVim, and it already looks so much better in my opinion. While the terminal itself looks much better already, we still have the boring default prompt which doesn't display any useful information. To change that, let's install Starship with brew install Starship. Once it is installed, we need to configure ZSH to initialize Starship whenever we start a new terminal. To achieve this, we need to create the ZSHRC file. Open it up in your favorite text editor. And here we want to add the following line and save. To apply the changes, type source zshrc. Now you see that the prompt already has changed. Instead of Henry at hbook and having everything on one line, we only see the current directory and have the input on a separate line. To configure Starship, we also need to create a configuration file. I will create this file in the default location with touch config starship.toml. Let's open up this file. Now, by far the easiest way to get a beautiful prompt is to select a preset from the documentation. Let me show you where to find those. Now I'm on starship.rs, I click on configuration, and in the left menu they have presets. If you like any of these presets, you can click on the headline, scroll down, and here you'll find the configuration toml file. I like to keep things quite simple, and I'll leave a link to my personal configuration file in the description box down below. In order to apply it, go back to the terminal, paste it in the starship toml file, and save. Now I'm not going to go into the nitty gritty details of how to configure Starship in this video. Let me know if you want to see a dedicated video to that. But basically the way this works is you have this format string and it references different Starship modules. And the order in which they appear in the string is the order in which they appear in the prompt. For example, from left to right we first see the directory, then we see the git branch, then the git status, then we have a fill, this creates a separation between the left side and the right side of the prompt, then we see the different programming language, Lua, Python, Node.js, we have the AWS profile, the Docker context, any background jobs, the duration of the command, then we have a line break, and then character. Character is the error symbol that signals where the input begins. We can directly use the modules with the default settings here, or we can override them by creating a block and then changing the properties. For example, if we wanted to have dots instead of spaces to separate the left from the right side of the prompt, we could just change the fill symbol from spaces to dots here. Now let's go back to the terminal and let me show you the final piece of the puzzle, which is syntax highlighting and autocompletion. Now to install both of them, let's run brew install zsh syntax highlighting and zsh auto suggestions. We also need to add a few lines to our zshrc file. Let's open it back up and add the following lines. This part here will source the syntax highlighting script whenever we start a new terminal. The part at the bottom will source the auto-suggestion script. And the part in the middle will disable underlines in the highlighting. Let's save that, exit out of the file, and source the zshrc file again. So now if I start typing, you can see that the keywords are highlighted differently, and I get auto-suggestions. And if, for example, we clear the terminal again, and I set the local Python version to, let's say, 
You can see that Starship immediately recognized this and displays the current Python version. Also, if I create a new directory, for example, my branch, and I go into it, and I initialize it as a git repository, you can see that Starship now displays the current branch. Also, if I activate an AWS profile, Starship will recognize that and show me the currently activated AWS profile, which is nice. Alright, that's it for today. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And if you're interested in a deep dive into my Starship configuration, let me know in the comments. I'd love to share more details. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.